I made a build with insane uptime on my abilities about a week ago and then I was discussing it with a good friend of mine and I realized the build works with almost all the hunter exotics but one exotic stood out to me and it's the assassin's cow. You've seen invis on void but with this build you could be permanently invis on solar as well. So if you look closely into what's going on in the build right now I'm pretty much invis all the time. If you also look at the melee and dodge, I have my dodge, I have my melee, and I'm also charging up my grenade really quickly. So I'm gonna show you guys what's making that possible. On the middle tree of Gunslinger, which we also call Blade Barrage, there's an insane synergy where your melee, your charged melee, is a knife that burns targets. While those targets are burning, you get your dodge back a lot quicker. When those enemies die, your melee also charges quicker, which means your melee and your dodge are charging super quickly just off of you throwing one charged melee. But there's something else here. Bungie also allowed this to work with weapons, so any weapon that can burn targets will also charge your dodge and your melee when you kill those enemies even if it's with the weapon, so without you even throwing your melee at all. In my previous video I believe the only weapon that could do this was Prometheus Lens, but in my chat someone suggested a few other exotics so I decided to look into a little bit more if there were any other solar exotics that had this option of burning the targets just like Prometheus Lens did and I was pleasantly surprised because I found everyone's favorite bow the Tiku's Divination. So what Tiku's does is when you fire from the hip, it marks targets and then it tracks your bow shots to the enemy. When you hit them, it starts to burn the targets, which like we know, causes your melee and your dodge to charge quicker. Now, unlike the Prometheus Lens, this weapon uses primary ammo, so you don't need to commit to using special ammo finder or anything like that. And also, it's a lot more fun of a weapon and it's also very efficient too. So we know the exotic weapon, exotic armor, and the abilities that make this build work. Let's talk about the best way to use it. Starting with the stat distribution, there are two main points of focus, mobility and discipline. If you can get 100 on both of this, you're pretty much set because even though this build is around melee, you could have maximum uptime on your melee with having as little strength as possible, so it doesn't matter that much. Having high mobility is to get your dodge quickly while you're invisible, and high discipline allows you to get your grenade almost as quickly as your other two abilities. Right now, the hunter grenades are not that great, but we know Solar 3.0 is coming out at some point, and if it follows the same pattern as Void 3.0, it means that all the grenades that are currently in the game will be available to the hunter as well. Which means you could have the thermite or the solar grenade from the warlock on the hunters too and those are some of the best grenades in the game right now. If you have some extra mod slots you could use recovery as your third stat that you're going after just because while you're not invis or even while you're invis sometimes some enemies still keep shooting at you it just gives you some leeway to be able to recover quickly while you're invis or if you just need some reprieve we haven't really talked much about what the exotic does the assassin's cowl even though it looks really really hideous Bungie, please release an ornament for this soon. It allows you to go invisible after you get a melee kill or a finisher kill. If the enemies are yellow bars, then you stay invis for longer, whether you finish them or you kill them with a the melee. So this is what keeps us going invis over and over. The idea is you start off shooting your Tikus to start the bunning effect on the target. Then you throw your grenade and lastly you throw your melee. What you want is for your melee to get the kill so that you can turn invis. Killing the enemy with your melee also spawns elemental wells with the build that we're using so you can go invis, pick those up and you can dodge close to those enemies to be able to get your melee back using the gambler's dodge. And then you can repeat this again, shoot your tikus, throw your melee and by this time you should have your dodge back because of all the burning that's going on but maybe you don't have your grenade yet. You get close, you dodge again. On your second dodge, you'll definitely have your grenade back and you can start from the beginning. Tikus, grenade, melee, dodge. And you do it over and over again. Even with targets that are a little bit chunky, because you're using so many different abilities to do damage, you're still able to get away with using this pattern. Not to mention that on tankier enemies, because they don't die right away, you keep that burn going, which keeps your dodge going, which gives you more melee. So I talked about elemental wells there. So let's talk about some of the mods we're gonna be using to make this build work. In today's build, there's not gonna be any charge of light, no war mine cells. We'll just stick with just making elemental wells only. If you've seen any of my build videos, you probably can guess one of the mods that's gonna be 
on this build. Melee Wellmaker is one that I love because charge melee hits grants you elemental wells. If the build is going to be around milling you might as well have those mods to generate elemental wells we'll be using two of the melee well maker mods with the bountiful well mods that way every time we get a charge melee kill we form three elemental wells instead of just one or two let's talk about the reason why we're making all these elemental wells since the elemental wells are going to match our subclass every time we pick one up it's going to give ability energy to all our uncharged abilities this whole build is about ability spam and the synergy of that so that's just very beneficial next up we're going to talk about how we're actually going to use these elemental wells we've got two remaining combat style mod slots we can use so my top choices are well of life and well of ordinance well of life is a great mod for health regeneration just imagine you going to 200 recovery instead of the max of 100 that's what it does as soon as you get hit you can see your health coming back immediately for will of ordinance this one's basically to charge up your grenade every time you pick up a solar elemental well you get an increased amount of grenade energy back if you've been looking and paying attention to the clips you'll notice i'm getting my grenade really quickly and it's because of the amount of elemental wells i'm making and the fact that i'm using this mod so essentially you could run around spamming abilities and shooting tikus but if you run into any issues you can always keep throwing melees at enemies to get kills and stay invisible and while you're invis you can dodge close to the enemies to get another melee to get another kill to then stay invis again so I did find this build very, very fun to use. Normally when I'm playing Hunter, it feels very structured. It just feels like you're working really hard to be able to get anything done most times. But with this particular build, it was actually fun for me. And I felt like it's something that I could use in a lot of activities. In highlight level activities though, I did feel like I was finishing more than I was meleeing. So I did take off one of the melee well maker mods to use reactive pulse. What reactive pulse does is it gives you an overshield while you're finishing. So that way, while you're waiting for your invis, to go off you don't die doing it also there's something else that i changed along the way uh if you don't have a key bind already for your charge melees i will suggest you do so having two separate buttons for the charged and uncharged melee just allows you to not have the proximity issues where it says you're too close to the enemy and that's the reason why it melees the enemy instead of actually throwing the melee with this build you're never really gonna melee anything so there's it doesn't matter what you bind your uncharged melee to just spam your charge melees and finish stuff and you're good to go so my people i'm really excited about solar or arc 3.0 coming out and i want us to have fun things we could try out when it finally does come out if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like and hit that sub button if you're new here i'd see you guys in the next one peace